Divine Truth Theme Discussions Discussions between Jesus and Mary about specific topics and issues This is session 13, part 2 of the discussion God's Laws of Forgiveness and Repentance where Jesus and Mary continue to discuss God's principles and laws of forgiveness and repentance and the role of the human conscience, answering questions relating to the conscious mechanism itself, emotions, and parental and societal beliefs. The session was recorded on the 21st of March 2018 from 11 a.m. in Wilstow, Queensland, Australia. Can my conscience be denied temporarily or permanently? So I guess this question rounds out our last two questions, which mm. is can we be without one? Can we damage one? Now, can can the conscience be denied? Yeah, so, of... so this is the truth now, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, your conscience can be denied temporarily, uh, but no, it cannot be denied permanently, mm. <laughs> which is interesting. interesting. Yeah, yeah uh, let's talk about that more. So temporarily, yes, you can deny your conscience for periods of thousands of years even. Mm -hmm by detuning from it so much and imposing so much denial inside of yourself, denial of your emotional sensitivity and a denial to want to know truth and all these other denials that we develop over time. We can deny it to the point where for hundreds, if not thousands of years, we deny it. Mm. And I have met people who have denied it for tens of thousands of years. Mm. So, you know, that's a significant amount of time, yeah. but it's still temporary. Yeah. <laughs> To deny it permanently would actually, in my opinion, be an impossibility. Mm. And the reason why it's an impossibility is because God designed all these laws to help you eventually become aware of it. Yeah. So, so, and, and in the end, you can beat your head against the laws of God for a long enough time, you know, even if it's tens of thousands of years, sooner or later, you're going to start to feel the hurt because mm. the hurt will get so intense that it will become, so you'll become aware of it. Yeah. And, and, and this, is the, this is the sad effect of a person detuning. The more you detune, the higher the pain is going to have to be in order to get you to re-sensitize. Mm. And, and so we're far better off being in tune and being very sensitive mm -hmm. than we are being detuned and having high, huge amounts of pain needed to make us re-sensitize. Yeah, it's so ironic, isn't it? Because that is the way that most people in the world operate is detune as much as possible, detune as much as possible, detune. So we're actually, again, if we think about it as a mathematical equation, we're in, we're um, ensuring or we're um, making it unavoidable that the input of pain is going to have to be extremely high for us to regain sensitivity, yes. to, to swing the balance back. Whereas yeah. if we just worked on lessening the detunement to pain, then the input of pain would, would not have to be as high. That's right, that's yeah. right. So uh, and for most people, unfortunately, nowadays, uh, pain is the only thing that motivates them to change. Mm. And that's an unfortunate uh, thing that doesn't mm. have to be true, yeah. but unfortunately it is true for the majority of people. It's only pain that says, no, I'm doing the wrong thing. And there's times even for myself that it's only pain that's caused me to m make a change. Mm. And, and that's, a sad, that's a sad thing, that, uh, that pain is required before you will change. Mm. So, so we've got to start allowing ourselves to be sensitive to pain. And one thing I've tried to do all my life is to be as sensitive as I possibly can to my pain, mm. which is so. So instead of like taking painkillers, no, you know, like so I, I tune, I tune into my pain. I mm. sit with my pain. I you know, let myself feel it, you know. Mm. And sometimes it's quite distressing. Yeah. Right. But but at least I'm not detuning from my pain because if I detune from my pain, I'm going to need more pain. Yeah. To actually open up to what the problem is. Yes. And, and that's something I do not wish to do. You know, I'm already in enough of it. I don't want to have more of it. Well, and especially when we understand that pain is created through sin. So it means, well, there's going to have to be more sin really in order for me to open up here. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And obviously um, the sins for different people differ. You know, obviously, mm -hmm. you know, some of the sins might be a resistance to love of self. Some of the sins might be a resistance to love of others. Mm. Some sins might be a resistance to love of truth. Yeah. Right. Some sins might be the resistance to the truth about yourself. 
Yeah. Some sins might be the resistance to truth about others mm. and so forth. So it just depends on the flavor yeah. and, uh, and how it causes pain. But if you allow yourself to be more sensitive to pain, you will, st you will stop this requirement of needing ever increasing amounts of pain mm. in order to have an awakening. So, so we, you know, we were talking about the temporary denial of the conscience. Uh, so, so that is possible. That isn't is it? possible. That's and that's how we do it through the avoidance of pain. Is it correct? Uh, or, no, it's not no. just through the avoidance of pain. And remember, I in the previous statements I just made, it was all about the avoidance of truth. Yes, so correct. Sorry, yeah. the avoidance of truth frequently causes is the major cause of our pain. Mm. And once we accept the truth. Uh, we, there's a high likelihood we'll become more loving and once we become more loving obviously we'll have less pain mm. so, so truth is the doorway to reversing everything mm. not, not love so much as truth mm. the truth, truth leads us to love so, so you can see that opening to the truth is the key thing yep. about things and discovering the truth is the key thing about reducing your pain uh, even though like once you discover the truth, you'll have to act upon it. <laughs> and yeah. that's an act of love. Y yes. Yeah. A love of yourself and love of others. Mm. Um, see, once you receive the truth via the conscious mechanism, then um, you can act upon it. You can choose to act upon it. That's your act of love. Mm. Um, if you choose to deny it, that's your unloving act. And your unloving act will also have its painful consequences. Yeah. Mm. So, no. <laughs> so there is this temporary, uh, you could say, desensitization or denial of the conscience that usually everybody goes through at some point, because as we've talked about in our conscience parts of our discussions, the last four, four sessions, mm. we've talked about, you know, how parents detune us from conscience, how society detunes us from conscience. So everybody on this planet has some level of detunement from their conscience, right? Yeah. So you could say everybody in the planet has experienced some level of temporary paralysis when it comes to their conscience. <laughs> temporary paralysis, did you yeah, say? Yeah. <laughs> and, but it's not going to be permanent. It mm. cannot be permanent because of the infinite manner in which God is compared to the finite manner in which we are. And God's laws are always, given enough time, mm -hmm. are always going to eventually lead mm. to us becoming aware of things that we were previously not aware of. Yeah, it's it's cool how truth wins out. In the end. In the end. <laughs> Unfortunately for many of us, it's a long end. <laughs> yeah, it's a long story. And it's a long, painful yeah. story in yeah. between now yeah. and the end, unfortunately for many of us, yeah. because we remain in a state of te the, this temporary state of denial for as long as we possibly can for many, many reasons. And many of those reasons are completely selfish, completely selfish in that, in that we do not want to do things God's way. We want to do it our own. We want to be self-reliant uh, rather than God-reliant. We, we don't want to acknowledge other people as, is, as, as if they are in, as important as ourselves mm. and so forth. And so, you know, there's a lot of reasons why we choose as adults to have this temporary denial of our conscience and 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 it's pointless going through all of them but but it is possible to do it for a long time yeah yeah but then that's where you were saying um the, that the pain increases the more we do it yeah the um, law demands the compensatory yeah. laws demand that the pain increases the more we do it but, but it's not necessarily the pain that's going to cause us to get back in tune with the conscience as much as the desire for truth. Well, no, I'm saying that the pain usually, unfortunately, when we're in this kind of condition, yeah. we, we make the choice to ignore all truth. Yeah. Right. And so the pain is the only motivator many times, mm. unfortunately, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that causes us to get back into a condition of desiring the truth. Gotcha. And it, but it is the desire of the truth that eventually opens us up back, opens up back, you know, the us back us up, back up yeah. to yeah. the conscience mechanism still at work. Yeah. Still, God's still been trying to share truth the whole time. Mm. Of course, God's got other mechanisms of sharing truth. Remember, the conscience was the only direct one. Yes. And God's still got the law of attraction, the law of cause and effect, and all these other laws that all share truth with us as well. Yeah. 
but uh, the conscience is a direct one, the one that means that we can be above law. So, so given that it is the direct one, um, is there anything in that? Because um, the, um, I, I don't want to keep talking about myself, but I don't know how to get around it, you know, because <laughs> I keep thinking of examples. But, um, you know, I know, as you know, for myself, this, co this conscience part of this series has been quite challenging emotionally. It's, it's uncovered emotions I didn't realise was in me, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. um, and I haven't fully understood. Mm -hmm. um, but I would consider that while I haven't been so passionate about love <laughs> in my life, I've certainly always been very interested in truth. Mm. And, and well, you say, well, certain types of truth, perhaps n not it, well, like it, truth it, about yes. your own truth about whether you should love yourself. You're not that open to. No. And I haven't been open to much either. Yeah. But truth about how you don't love others. Yes, you are open to that. Yeah. And so, you know, um, and this is the case for most people, right? They're, they're open to some things and closed to other things. So, so I guess I'm, and, and I mean, I've lived with a fount of truth for a decade now, you know, and, and I, I love that element of our relationship. You know, it's something that's very challenging, but I just, I, I just, I value it so much. And mm. I value the people around us and our ability to speak truthfully with each other. And like, I just I love it. Mm. <laughs> and yet, conscience is something that I'm very, um, uh, have a lot of emotional turmoil around and block. I would say block too. Um, and now I understand some of the reasons for that, but it just when you said it's the only direct mechanism, would you say that we can be quite blocked to the direct mechanism because we can't filter the types of truth? Or is it something, I mean, I suspect for me, there's something about it being a direct connection to God that also well, brings it, up issues. You for know? you, it's a direct connection to your sadness. Yeah. You know, and you're terribly afraid of feeling your sadness. So, you know, you, you're worried about it being psychotically, you're being psychotically sad, you yes, know what I mean? I am. And, and uh, uh, for other people, it's different things, you know, well, every so, person's different. And that's what I mean. I, I don't really need to have, have the answer for myself, but I was just trying to bring, you know, because we've listed a bunch of reasons why we deny our conscience. Um, and a lot of them are about like we don't believe in truth, we don't have faith in truth, or we don't like morality goodness. or goodness or... You know, all and, these and in things. our outline, if people look at our outlines, they'll see that in this section there's, there's quite a long list of reasons why we might not, you know, want to hear the truth. To, to hear the truth directly from God. Mm. I just, I just wondered if there was, um, you know, I can see that the things we've listed would also cause us to resist truth from all other sources as well, or many other sources. Yes, but remember, everybody's injured with truth in different ways. So some truths you want to accept because they're okay to, for you to accept mm -hmm. and you don't have much emotional resistance to it. And other truths you have huge amounts of emotional resistance to. And, and what I've found too is that some people, I look at their emotional resistance to one kind of truth and go, well, I've never had, you know, that, that seems to be a tiny little <laughs> <laughs> minuscule flea to me, you know, as to why, why are you getting so upset about it? I don't understand. And then there's probably other things where I get upset and other people, what's wrong with you? Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Totally. Because, because the way we've, uh, you know, we've, the way we're denying our emotion differs for each person. But, I, but here I'm, I guess I'm trying to get at why, why be, de, is there a way we're just detuned from the conscience because it's the conscience, you know, rather than about a, a relationship with truth? No, it's also about God, because remember, mm. it's God's voice yeah. arriving by the conscience. Yes. So if a person doesn't believe in God, they will be completely detuned from their conscience. Yes. And, yeah. um, you know, we've talked to some spirits recently who have had a complete deterrent from their conscience, not, not wanting to talk or even con conceive of the possibility of God being able to share truth with them. Mm. So, you know, it, it, there's lots of different spiritual and emotional reasons mm -hmm. why a person may be detuning from their conscious mechanism. And sometimes we're open to our conscious mechanism in one area while we're completely closed to our conscious mechanism in another. Mm -hmm. So for the average person on the planet, murdering would bother their conscience. Even accidentally, 
harming someone would bother their conscience. Well, you mean it would co- they would be sensitive to the conscience in that uh, scenario? That's right. Yeah. You know, what we call bother the conscience, yeah, as yeah, we talked yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. Nothing really bothers yeah. conscience. But, no. you know, bother, it bothers them they emotionally. Like, oh, There'd be an emotional yeah. response in them about what the conscience truth is telling them. Gotcha. You. You know, so internally, there is a feeling in them that says murder is wrong. Where do you think that comes from? Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. And, well, it comes from God. God, yeah. God is telling us murder is wrong, right? Yeah. And because uh, a child doesn't know either way, you know, um, mm-hmm. doesn't know what life is or anything, you know, but knows that murder is wrong for some mm. reason. Why, why is that? You know, because it hasn't had a personal experience of murdering someone and working out it's wrong. Mm. Uh, and this is the thing about the conscience. We don't need to have the personal experience if we listen to it. Yeah. We, we can just avoid the personal experience and have a discovery of, yeah, I can see why it's wrong. And even you can even ask, why is it wrong? Oh, well, there are all good reasons, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so, you know, we might be open in that area, and most of the planet is mm-hmm. uh, open in that area, just like most of the planet would be open to the concept that rape is wrong and so forth. But in other areas, like meeting your addictions, right? For example, most Mm. of us are completely in disagreement with Mm -hmm. God's viewpoint with addictions, completely. Like we're we're, we're at opposite ends of the spectrum, Mm -hmm. right? We don't see any harm in them. We justify them. We we continue engaging them. them. We rationalize them. We minimize them. them. We shift the blame on other people for them. None of these things are acceptable to God. And yet most of us have no knowledge of that. Why is that? Well, because in that area, we've been completely detuned from our conscience, yeah. completely detuned from its operation. Mm. Right? We're ignoring it. It's, it's broken yeah. in that regard. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. It's not the conscience that's broken. It's our ability to listen to it that's broken. Yes. And, and so we completely ignore it. So perhaps then just to, to wind up the question, which was about um, being able to temporarily but not permanently deny the operation of the conscience. Mm-hmm. Really, you're saying, yes, we can temporarily deny it completely mm-hmm. and then we can temporarily deny it in certain aspects of our life. Yes. Yeah. And, and frequently that is the way most people live. Right. So the second, the second way. Yep. Uh, where we where we have our we, we do accept some things coming from our conscience, mm-hmm. and then we reject a whole lot of other things. But clearly, most people are not aware that the conscience is uh, ma- uh, sort of a direct line to God in that case either. No, they're just no. they're just responding to something. Sometimes it's as we've spoken about in other um, things, other questions. Sometimes it's it's actually. A, fo- a false idea of what the conscience is based on society and their family. So they call that the conscience uh, and it's not. And sometimes it's a spirit telling them what to do and they <laughs> accept that, you know, yeah. like, but it's not conscience. And, and so sometimes it is. So it's a bit hit and miss if we're not very educated. That, well, if you're not educated, you have no idea about it usually. Yeah. And, and I think most people who have listened to our whole series would probably realise they have very little idea about compensation, conscience or forgiveness yeah, or repentance for yeah, that matter. Yeah. But, but it's... You know, this is the thing is that um, most of us, because of that lack of education that comes from our childhood experience, Mm. education nowadays is all about, you know, trying to survive in the world, really. Mm. You know, this is the whole reason why many, why universities have been created to try and help you survive better in the world, you know. Um, And and it's not about actually how does everything work emotionally? How does everything work between people? How, you know, what what is the best way of living? There's no no education about love, Mm. as we've talked about in our assistance group. So so naturally, the average person on the planet is very, uh, you know, they lack any attunement Mm -hmm. to love and to truth Mm. and therefore to the conscience. And so the majority of people on the planet are not completely detuned from their conscience. Because, because in some areas they're open to it, mm-hmm. but the average person on the planet is completely unaware of it. Yeah. So while yes. they might be f- receiving the information, mm-hmm. they don't know its source or don't understand its source and they yeah. don't understand the mechanism that exists. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Mm-hmm. Well, that probably leads us perfectly to our next question. Mm-hmm. Is the conscience the source of all messages I receive? No, and I, I would say here it, it depends on our condition. Mm-hmm. For for a celestial spirit, every message they receive comes via the conscience, pretty much, right? Because they are seeking God first. So yep. all of the information that comes from God is the thing they're interested in first. It's not the sum total of all their messages that they receive. Yes. Because they receive messages from other spirits mm. and people in higher condition and all that stuff, just like we do. Yeah. But 
their highest priority is their relationship with God. They're now at one with God. So mm -hmm. the very first message they get on every subject always comes from God. And they presumably there's a lot of discernment about the source of the message. What's well, there doesn't God need. Other they people? doesn't need to be. They're in permanent. They're in a permanent emotional relationship with God. They know it's it's a it's an experience. That's what I mean. There's, There's no, no discernment confusion needed. I understand. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> there is there is just no confusion. Yeah. They know this is coming from God, and they know if it's when not. It's not. It's just simple. Yeah. Now, for on the, on the earth, obviously, that's not the way it is. Mm. On the earth, um, the conscience is the source of probably very few messages that we receive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And for the average person on the planet, the con in the course of a day, the the messages that, in terms of the amount or number of messages they receive, very few of them, if any, come from the operation mm. of the conscience. Mm. So, and, and in, say, in uh, session 12, we talked about how to, how to have discernment about different messages. So we don't need to go through all of that again. But again, but but that... again once you have a relationship with God, you don't need discernment about yes. the messages. Yeah. You don't. Yeah. It's only a question asked by those who don't have discernment, how to have discernment. <laughs> <laughs> who don't have, um, yes, I see. Don't do you understand what I mean? So, yeah. uh, 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 the, the question, how do I have discernment about where the message is coming from, is proof in itself that you have not yet got a, message, a relationship with God. Because if you did have, you would know which ones are coming from God and which ones aren't. And when you say a relationship with God, a love-based relationship, a love-based emotional uh, connection with God, which yeah. is something where you've received some of God's love, yeah, and you've developed, begun developing that. And when you don't have that a connection, then you are going to need discernment. You, you're going to have to understand where it's coming from because. A, a, a lot of the time you're going to think it's coming from somewhere that it's not. Yeah. 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 Very good. So the so, conscience is not the, uh, you know, the source of all the messages I receive on the planet, on Earth. We have the potential of it becoming the source of all the messages we, we, we get, all the important messages anyway. Um, but for the majority of us on Earth, we are so detuned from it, we are so, you know, desensitized to its operation that we receive very, very few messages via our conscience. Yeah. And even the ones we do receive, we don't even recognise them as coming from God. Yeah, <laughs> so it's that hit and miss scenario that we talked about, yeah. So, you know, this whole thing of what I said earlier about um, uh, most people on the planet can see that murder, uh, feel that murder is wrong and they mm -hmm. would feel bad if they committed murder. Mm. That is an indication that they are receiving some information from God. They just yeah. don't even know that they are. Yeah. And they think it's some inbuilt thing, you know, some yeah. info adjuster, you know, yes. inside of themselves yeah. that yeah. causes them to all think the same thing. Yeah. No, it's not. There's one source. That's why they all think the same thing. Yeah. And the one source is God. Yeah. And that's why everybody thinks the same thing or most people think the same thing on the matter. Yeah. And so um, in one of the previous sessions, we talked about developing some desires that would help us uh, become sensitive to the con to mm. the conscience, and uh, I was just I was just trying to search for which session that was in. I think it was in session nine or ten. Right. Um, yeah. 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 Like, I think we mentioned, didn't we, during our sessions on the conscience about how to develop it, and we talked. I think it was the second session. Yeah, that we so talked that about was 10, yeah. developing a desire. You know, yes. to to work through the issues that that cause a lack of sensitivity to yeah. the conscious. That's a very important thing that we need to it do. Is. Yeah. And, and we do, when we're beginning, it's going to be quite confusing because if you think about the average person on earth today, we're bombarded by messages. Mm -hmm. You know, most people have an email account, they have a mobile phone. They have, you know, if you think of, of an email account and a mobile phone together, well, in the uh, course of the day, email accounts, yeah. Yeah, how many messages do you get there? Yeah. yeah, hundreds and hundreds. The average yes. person probably, and then and then on top of that, there's the messages you receive from society emotionally. Mm -hmm. So all the and the messages you receive from your family emotionally, and then there's the actual messages you get from both of those sources. The verbal ones. <laughs> the and the verbal yeah, ones. Yes. Right, which are often a bit contrary to the ones you receive emotionally. <laughs> yeah. And then there's the messages that you get from spirits, yeah. who are of a similar nature or condition to yourself. 
with whom you have the most attunement mm -hmm. because because persons who are in the same condition of you you feel attracted to spending time with and that applies whether you can't can see them or you can't yes so you're going to have a lot of attunement with them so you'd be getting hundreds of messages a day from them as well mm -hmm. right where's the space left <laughs> for god to give you a message via the mechanism of the conscience in no space left <laughs> well it, it does it depends on how we prioritize emotionally put priority on the messages but most of us we set a primal we, we are only concerned about you know negating our fears and mm -hmm. satisfying our addictions mm -hmm. and as such as those things are our priority of course someone sharing the truth via the conscience that is saying don't do something that we want to do yeah we don't want to hear that yeah we, we would rather hear that 1200 people who we've got on our facebook page saying go for it girl yeah, you know what yeah, i mean yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah you'd rather hear that you know yeah and and this is where we go we we are we are so uh, bombarded with messages that are in harmony with our condition yeah and God is completely out of harmony with our condition. We are on earth in a general condition of in the middle of the hells of the first sphere. Mm. And God's condition is way above the 36th sphere. We are in complete disharmony with God's condition. Yeah. So how many of the messages are we actually going to be getting that are actually going to be coming from God? Mm. Very, very few. Very few. Very few. Yeah. We can change that. And only if we have a desire for truth in particular yes. can we change that. Yeah. But most of us don't have a desire for truth. We just have a desire to be told what we think is true. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. And so that causes us to be completely detuned from the mechanism of the conscience and, and the truth that comes from God via it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm. Okay. So why would I want to believe that a spirit is the conscience? And and perhaps I can give a little bit of introduction to this question. So sure. So obviously um, we've been presenting this material about the conscience and we've received some emails from people um, appreciative about the, the, um, the material, but also some sort of saying, oh, yes, I, that's very validating. I've been listening to... I listen to my conscience all the time, yeah. every day. Yeah, yeah. And as I've just stated in our previous question, most people can't hear the conscience for years of their life yes. on earth. Yep. So how is it that these people are listening to their conscience all the time, every day? <laughs> well, I would say they must have a pretty kick-ass life. You know, they must be pretty happy because to hear and act upon God's truth. Not only that, uh, if they're doing it all the time, every day of their life, they'd surely have to almost be at one with God, wouldn't they? Yeah. And yeah. I can't see that either. No. So. Yeah. <laughs> And, and also, you know, we've heard from people who actually have a name for um, what their they're conscience. calling their conscience and, and feeling that they have access to this knowledge upon demand that they can, this sort of like a stream of consciousness that, that they um, have watched our material thus far and gone, oh, that's what they're talking about, this other thing that I have, this thing and that I've I thought give. that all my life. Yes. And I have a name for this thing and it's just like this amazing sort of source font of knowledge that I can you know? have at any moment. Mm. Um, and so we did want to take the moment to clarify what is going on there. Yeah, they're yeah. just being told messages by spirits. That's yeah. all. Now, some of these spirits are male malevolent yeah. and some are benevolent. Yeah. And frequently it's a mixture of both, actually. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. the messages they get are out of harmony with God's truth, mm -hmm. and sometimes the messages they get are in harmony with God's mm. truth, but not for any other reason than because they're in, more in harmony with their condition yeah. than anything else. Yeah. In other words, their personal condition is such that they'd rather accept these kind of messages, and so they've attracted a spirit or a, a, a familial spirit or, or some other spirit that enjoys this uh, sharing of information with the person, and they then think that that spirit is God. Yeah. And that's where there is a huge amount of problem. And so. I mean, we have encountered that a lot in various people, not just when we discuss the conscience. Every but... single person who has ever spoken to us about this has not had a connection with God. Uh, it's spoken to us about this particular phenomenon. Yes. yes. Every single yeah. person that I've met in the last 15 years yes. has not yeah. had a connection with God. No. no. Every single one of them. So... Yeah. If you feel you're special and unique in this regard, I would suggest perhaps not, yeah. given the fact 
that the majority of us are heavily detuned from the conscience from the moment we, are, we were conceived. Um, if you feel that you've had this connection all your life, then it's not your conscience. Yeah. It's not your conscience. Yeah. Because as we've spoken about in previous yeah. sessions, we have to de develop these v very high aspirations and desires, don't we, in order to really get sensitive to the conscience. Exactly. And, and most of us haven't even been educated about what those high ideals and desires actually are. Mm -hmm. And then when we are, most of us who really um, sincerely consider that have to face quite a lot of emotional resistance to those high ideals because we realise, gosh, in order to really fully desire to love and fully desire truth, I'm going to have to deal with some personal pain, you know, because at the moment all my pain is screaming at me, do not go for those desires. I'm freaking out, you know. So so in order to um, develop those aspirations, we must have done like a lot of um, very sincere, heartfelt, um, humbling kind of emotional work, don't we? Mm -hmm. and, and most people haven't. No, well, most people who think they have haven't even. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, we meet people who say, oh, I've done this for 10 years and I've had wonderful transformation since. And, and, and we go, wow, like, that's a bit sad considering that, you know, what you, how you're treating people at the moment is just not in harmony with love at all. Mm. Uh, Which so, is not to say that you can't have an amazing transformation in 10 years if you really sincerely engage in those desires. Of course right. you can. Yeah. But yeah. most people who say they have haven't. Yeah. And uh, and we've got to stop deluding ourselves. Mm -hmm. the, da the damage. There's no harm in you receiving information from spirits, yeah. if the spirits are benevolent. Yeah. But there is a harm in you believing that those spirits are God. Yeah. That there's a big harm in that because mm -hmm. you're going to trust them as if they are God. Yeah. And they're not God. They're just developing people just like you. Yeah. So so to put your trust in them as if they're God, mm. th that's going to cause you lots of drama down the track. Mm. And so it's a, it's a very damaging thing to do to yourself, to believe that spirits who are feeding you constant information and have been doing since childhood mm. or have been doing since you had some kind of revelation, yeah. right, that they are God, you, you, you're just damaging yourself immensely yeah. because you're placing your trust, believing that this spirit is God. And why, and why is this spirit allowing you to believe mm. that they're God? Mm. No spirit who is, ha, is anywhere near close to God mm. would allow you to believe that they are God. Yeah. So, so it has to say that the condition of the spirit can't be too good mm. if they're allowing you to believe mm. and encouraging you to believe that they are God. Mm. So this is a, a, it's a very concerning part of this where people listen to this information about the conscience and then assume that their, their connections with spirits, their codependent addictions with spirits, are their conscience. Yeah. Uh, it's a very damaging thing to do to yourself. Yes. And, and very damaging to do to people around you too. Yeah. If they trust you. Yeah. Right? So, so you've got to be very careful of that. And, uh, and so uh, while there's no harm in having a relationship with a spirit because a spirit is just a person, mm. There is a harm in believing that spirit is God. Mm. And, and God's messenger, like yeah. the conscience operating. And it's the same with the person on earth. There's no harm in having a relationship with Jesus. But if Jesus told you he was God, yeah. there's, there's going to be a lot of harm from that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And this is it's the same thing. It's the same you know, consideration. Having a relationship with a person of any kind is fine. Yeah. But having that person tell you they're God, that's not fine. Yeah. Right? There's something wrong now. Yeah. And if they support your belief even that they're God, that's wrong too. Mm. So, and that actually betrays the condition mm. of the spirit involved. So, so yeah, uh, so the different people have uh, emailed in saying, you know, I've had this flow of consciousness every, all my life and all the things you're telling me are very similar to things I've already heard. Uh, you know, honestly. I can't believe that for a start. Mm. Most of the spirits who are in the condition of feeding this information mm. are just basically telling you it's the same thing as what they're saying when they have no understanding of what I'm saying at all. Yeah. And we've met many spirits, even who are highly developed in the spirit world, who have no understanding of divine truth at mm. all. Mm. So, so it's a common thing. It's not, yeah. it's not an uncommon thing. Yeah. It, it is the most common thing, yes. in fact. Yeah. And, and remember, attractions on earth are to do with condition. So. If you and I have a similar condition, there's a strong likelihood that we'll 
get a stronger bond. And it's the same with our spirit friends. Yeah. If we have a similar condition, we get a stronger bond. And for the majority of people who are receiving, or when I say the majority, all of the ones we've ever met mm. so far who say that they have a connection with God when they have this experience, yeah. do not have a connection with God mm. and instead have a connection with a spirit that they are believing are their connection with God. Yeah. yeah. And it's a very damaging thing to believe. Yeah. yeah. Very. As they will find out in their future. <laughs> Yeah, and which is not to say, as you have said, that sometimes these spirits might even have um, uh, benevolent uh, uh, feelings, benevolent feelings, mm. feelings of care and regard for the person. Mm. But as you say, we need to be very clear about what is God and what is a spirit and mm. what what's really going on here and seek to know that as well. Yeah, but we've also got to bear in mind that the majority of people who are in poor condition of love think that they're loving when they're not. Yeah. So, so many spirits self-assess themselves, yep. saying, "Yeah, I'm a nice person. I'm helping you." When really they're not helping you; they're hindering you. Yeah. Right. It's like you know we've met many spirits who say, "Came along and say, I'm helping that person. That person needs to learn this, and they yep. need to learn that. And if that means my, me putting a bit of punishment on them to learn that, and that means me criticizing a bit to learn that, then that's what I'm going to do. I'm doing them a good favor, you know. And you reason with the spirit after all, and go, "Oh, maybe I'm not doing them such yeah. a good favor." Yeah. You know, this is an indication of the spirits that surround most of us. Yeah. When it's a very rare person who is actually good at self-assessment, who has good self-awareness, whether they're on earth or in the spirit world, it is very, very rare. Yes, particularly in the lower condition. Yeah. Particularly in yeah. the lower condition. By the time you get on the path uh, yeah. on God's way and you have received some of God's love and you're more sensitive to the conscience, you start to have more self-reflection. Mm. But, but even then, you know, we meet many spirits that are well-developed spirits, far more developed than any person on earth, yeah. and they still don't have a high level of self-reflection. Yeah. So, you know, compared to a celestial spirit, mm. what a celestial spirit would have. Mm. So, you know, we've got to be very careful here um, with, with this spirit side of things. Yeah. Because w what I see happening is many people assume now that the conscience is what their experience is, is with the spirit mm. and they're still not hearing that actually no that's an experience with a spirit yeah uh, a very very different kind of experience than experience with the conscience mm. 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 okay thank you so uh, my encouragement to those kind of people would say if you've got such a good connection with them ask them their name yeah. ask them details about their life mm. treat them as if they're a person because yeah. they are yes rather than treating treating them like they're god, they're god. Mm. yeah Beautiful. Thank you. So let's move on to our next section, which, so we've just talked a lot about um, the technical nature of the conscience. Now I'd like to ask you a series of questions about the emotional nature of the conscience. Mm -hmm. And again, we've covered a lot of this in previous sessions, mm -hmm. um, but these are just some clarifier questions and different things that have come up. Mm. Mm. And it's probably not good to say the emotional nature of the conscience because the conscience doesn't really have an emotional nature. <laughs> <laughs> the, the conscience uh, obviously affects our emotions. Mm. And so we need to talk about the difference between the conscience and our emotions. We need to talk about the difference between God's emotion and our emotion, probably. Mm -hmm. We need to talk about how emotions affect the operation of the conscience mechanism itself because, you know, emotions can either suppress it or or help it mm -hmm. and and also how we respond emotionally to the conscience in operation so um so that's how there's this emotional connection but mary have her <laughs> go in <laughs> have, a, have a silent a silent sneeze <laughs> not like me i just make, make a racket um <laughs> <clears throat> Yeah, so uh, we need to discuss the whole, those three things about the conscience and how it interplays, I yeah. suppose you could say, with our emotions. Mm, mm. Mm. So let's do it. Mm. <laughs> All right. Is the conscience the reason I feel bad emotionally? Well, as we've said many times now, um, and it's probably good to say it every time, <laughs> The conscience doesn't make us feel anything. Yeah. Um, it can trigger feelings, of course, because we have feelings inside of us. And when the truth hits us, then a feeling comes out. So it's like it's like people could liken it if they've been to one of my seminars or something and they ask me a personal question and I tell them some truth. 
like I'm just telling them some truth. Mm. Like I, I'm not trying to harm them or hurt them or make them feel good or bad or anything mm. other than other than just know what the truth is. Because mm. I think knowing what the truth is is a great thing. And their response to it is frequently emotional. Like yeah. either they, you know, many people end up in tears, or mm -hmm. some end up angry, or or resist and resistive, and there's all sorts of emotional responses. That's what it's like when we receive truth from God via the conscience too. Yeah. That we, you know, the truth just comes to us uh, via the mechanism, but we have a emotional response to that truth. Yeah. And and that emotional response that we have to the truth is dependent on so many factors that we, we can't probably list them all because mm. there's just so many, you know, mm -hmm. there's, it, 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 there's almost an infinite amount of reasons because there's an infinite amount of what might happen to us, you know. Mm. And when you consider 7 billion people on the planet and having all of them having a unique quiet kind of an experience, you can see that there must be a wide variety of reasons why a person would uh, feel bad have feelings yeah. that they feel are bad yeah. is probably a better way of saying yeah. it because it, the reality is uh, God's not making us feel bad or truth even makes us feel bad. Mm -hmm. But but we often respond badly to the truth yes. because of other things that are pre-existing in our conscience when we're... It, at, in our soul. Pre-existing, sorry, in our soul yeah. that are a response to hearing the truth from our conscience. From conscience. Yeah. And we did speak in a previous question in this session about all the different types of pain that we can feel and the different sources of that pain. Yes, I might be ashamed, I might be afraid, I might feel guilty, I might, you know, there's all sorts of feelings that I might have that I might get angry, I might feel resentful, I might feel hateful and spiteful and, you know, I might just feel d in complete denial, you know, like mm. a lot of people go into this, oh, it's not like that, you know, disbelief and yeah. all sorts of things that we can have as an emotional response to the truth. Um, but they're our emotions, they're our responses, they're mm. not what God's trying to make us have. You know, God would prefer us to be very open to the truth. Mm. And therefore, very open to what God's saying to us via the conscience, because God knows that if we are open, we'll be happy. Yeah, yeah, that's mm. right. And I think in this question also, we wanted to highlight that um, we've made it very clear now that the conscience doesn't make us feel anything, but often we feel in response to the the signals and messages of the conscience. Mm. But there are other reasons that we can feel bad and confuse that with the conscience. Yes. And and sometimes that is because other people in our environment are sort of implying to us emotionally through their attitude. Um, and that, their actions. And, and their actions. And their attack frequently. And that's right. That that we should feel badly, that yes. we have done something wrong. Yes. And, and when sometimes, from God's perspective, we haven't. When we, when we haven't. And we can feel confused about, oh, hey, is this my conscience? Or is this, you know, am I just really sensitive to people around me right now? And frequently we feel bad because we've so, because when other people say, oh, you've harmed me and you've hurt me. And actually, from God's perspective, there's no reason for us to feel bad. So, mm. so, so God would be telling us via the conscious, you've got no need to feel bad here. Mm. So frequently we feel bad and it's got nothing to do with our conscious at all. Or with sin or, at all. Or with sin at all, sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that we haven't sinned. Yes. And people are trying to make us feel bad or we feel bad. But in those cases, um, we are more attuned with other people's attitudes and beliefs about us than we are to our own compensation because in that case we would have you know a rewarding or a positive a rewarding compensatory that's right. experience that's the sadness of it, it the, is sad, the, sad, it? the yeah. sadness of it is we are more in tune with each other with other people's feelings mm. than we are with god's feelings or even our own yeah or even just the workings of the law that's trying to reward us yeah. in a certain yeah. state yeah. Yeah. yeah and and when the law rewards us but people punish us we frequently go along with the people yeah. rather than going, hang on a sec, no, the law's rewarded me, so I must be doing the right thing. Mm. These people are wrong. Mm. Yeah. Mm. It's, it's very frequent. So, yeah, I, this is where a lot of people get confused. The majority of people in today's society are very hooked into one another, yeah. in, addic addictively so. Yeah. And you can see that by the growth of things like face, Facebook and stuff like that, you know, social, social media. Social media. Yeah. Like, Twitter probably is even worse, isn't it? Oh, I've got to tell everybody just one-liners of what I'm doing every minute of my day type of thing. <laughs> you know, that kind of thing is like, 
and demonstration of mm. how hooked in we are mm. to everybody knowing what we're doing and mm. feeling about what we're doing. Connection. It's, con- it's like all this connection. But it's not a connection. N- no, I don't, I don't mean it's like a soul-based connection. It's, a, it's just we need to addictively feel connected and do you think that is because we are I wouldn't are even in... use the word connected. Well, okay. We can... just want our addictions met. Yeah. And our addictions are that people acknowledge us and make us feel like we fit into society and we feel safe when we fit into society. And the more people who like us, we feel safer and so forth. And these are all terrible addictions that detune us from our conscience. Yes. And my question was going to be, do you think that, we, so if I could call it responses, we want responses yes. from everyone. Yes. Um, um, do you think that we're, it's almost like humanity is becoming more and more obsessed with responses because they're less and less connected from a true soul-based perspective with themselves and others. Yes. And it's a way of avoiding that pain, numbing to the pain we talked about previously. That's right. Just like, I've got to have more inputs, more inputs, more inputs to, to help me kind of kid myself feel like I belong. that I've got some connection yeah. and belonging when I don't yeah when I feel I don't really yeah. you know yeah. and there's again it's an avoidance of personal pain mm. it's driven by the avoidance of personal mm. pain mm. and and most of the time we are driven completely by the avoidance of personal mm. pain mm. our primary fear as we talked about in our second assistance group yeah. in 2016 is our avoidance of Painful emotions. Well, painful emotion is our pri- one of our <laughs> that, primary fears. That yeah. is our primal fear. Yeah. <laughs> in a lot of ways. yeah. And, 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 you know, ev- almost everything people we meet do mm-hmm. is about avoiding that one yeah. fear. Yeah. And, and, and yet they call it, oh, my conscience bothered me about it. No, that person bothered you about it. Yes. You know, and you just feel bad because the person. Yes bothering you you know and you'd rather listen to that person than listen to what god's saying to you via the conscience yeah so yeah most most people when they have painful or feel bad emotions yeah those emotions have nothing whatsoever to do with their conscience Mm. and Mm. in fact have a lot to do with their own emotional injury of feeling petrified Mm. about having to feel a negative or what they believe is painful emotion Mm. so Yes. You know, that, that, that's a big problem on the planet and a big problem even amongst most of the people who listen to what we say to yeah. them. And, and you can see it all the time in operation. It's like when it's interesting when we have day to day interactions with people. Yeah. There's many people where you have maybe once a month interaction or a few, you know, a few times a month. Those people are not challenged. But as soon as you put them in a day to day interaction, they are challenged every minute of the day. Yeah. Now, if you were connected with God, you would be challenged probably. <laughs> Most people minute. on this planet would be challenged every minute of every day. Yeah. Because God sharing truth through the conscience would be th- 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 what, what the person's receiving is in so much disharmony with what they want to hear yeah. that they'd be challenged all the time. Yeah. Yeah, and you're speaking here in this very injured situation that we find ourselves in where everyone has got a wealth of emotional uh, yeah. injury. Yeah, yeah of false whereas, whereas the celestial spirit loves this yes. beautiful one-on-one connection with God mm-hmm. where they're getting messages via the conscience, everything they want to ask gets, uh, gets replied mm-hmm. to and, and, and they love that, you know. But, mm. but what we notice is if, if, if you can't bear to bear to be in my company, you're definitely not going to bear to be in God's, Mm. right? Because God's got a far greater love and a far greater uh, aspect of truth than I have. And yet the majority of people can't even bear to be like, the the main feeling I feel from most people still is a feeling of, uh, what what would I call it? Just just total terror (laughs) in my company. (laughs) Now that's a terror about truth. Yeah. Really. Mm. And, and, at the end of the day, that demonstrates how terrified you are to hear from God as well. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Okay. Very true. Mm. <laughs> are emotions like fear, shame, or guilt caused by the conscience? Now, we've spoken a lot about this again, but. Yeah, but let's look at these particular yeah. emotions because yes. a lot of people think 
these particular emotions are also associated with the concept that the conscience bothers me. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Where we get afraid of something or we feel guilt or mm -hmm. we feel ashamed of what we did. And we think, oh, that's a healthy <clears throat> thing because my conscience has told me, he's, he's given me that feeling. Yeah. And it's not your conscience. Mm -hmm. As we've said many times now, the conscience is just a mechanism that tells you how God feels. Mm. <laughs> and, and it's the truth. It gives you information about mm. how God feels because the conscious mechanism is attuned to God telling you the truth. So, but, but a lot of us have been controlled by a parental figure desiring for us to feel either fear, shame or guilt in order to control our behaviour and do what they perceive to be right. Of course. Haven't they? That's how we can so easily get confused, would you say? Well, I feel they are all personal emotions. Yeah. And fear, shame or guilt. Um, our personal emotions generally, the, we, generally that we don't wish to feel. Mm -hmm. So usually we're in resistance to them. Mm -hmm. And so certainly because we're in resistance to fear, shame and guilt, we're going to struggle to hear our conscience. Right? But it's not the conscience that causes fear, shame or guilt. Mm. It's our struggle to resist the truth mm. that causes fear, shame and guilt. Mm. Right? So, mm. you know, we've got to get the context right, really, don't we? Yeah. True, true guilt is the knowledge that we have sinned. Now, now, true guilt certainly might be assisted by our connection with the conscience mm -hmm. because because God can tell us when we sin and when we haven't. Yes. God can tell us the truth about our sin. Mm. So true guilt which, which is not a feeling of guilt, I feel guilty, but rather a knowledge that you are guilty, that yes. you have done this Something wrong thing. Wrong. Yes. It's, it's the difference between a feeling, a feeling of what we call guilt yeah. and actually going along to a court and the judge saying, you are guilty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's Whether it. you believe you are or not, you know. <laughs> it's happening internally, that process. That's right. Yeah. Uh, the conscience has the mechanism to say, you are guilty of this sin. Mm. You are. Because a lot of times when a lot of us, when we say, oh, I'm feeling guilty. No, what we're feeling is I'm terrified that I might have done something wrong. That's not guilt, actually. No, that's not yeah. guilt. The, yeah. true, the true feeling of guilt as like defined in the dictionary, really, yeah. is the guilt is you have done it. Yes, and it's this is true. This is true that you've done it. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and and I suppose a, a full knowledge of guilt would be like for for me to have that would be to say, Yes, I did something wrong. I know it was wrong and I did it. Yeah. And I know that, it, yeah. And this is why a judge in a court says, are you guilty or innocent? Yeah. He doesn't say, uh, do you feel really guilty now, <laughs> even though you haven't done it? <laughs> Does he? <laughs> he says, guilt means you have done it, right? Yeah. <laughs> not yeah, not yeah. that you might have done it or you think you might have or yeah. you're afraid you might have or whatever. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and it's the same with God. If you mm -hmm. have a true sense of guilt, you know you did it. Mm. You know you've done wrong. Mm. And that's a whole heap different than feeling like maybe I've done wrong or maybe you know, being afraid that you might have yeah. is really what we call guilt nowadays. Mm. And, and that is an emotion that, of course, that the conscious doesn't cause mm. at all. It, it's, a, it's an emotional response, probably, like you said, from our childhood experience, because yeah. our parents love that kind of feeling. Because if a, if a parent can keep the child in a state of fear all the time, where, the, where they're always wondering, what does the parent want me to do next? Yeah. Now the parent has full control of the child. Yes. Right? which is what most parents are aiming for because mm -hmm. it's a nice smooth <laughs> a smooth parenting uh, pro process then yeah. they think you know yeah. and, and so that's why we have these kind of emotions but they're not related to our conscience mm. in any way mm. Mm. yes okay thank you what is the difference between my conscience speaking and other feelings well the conscience doesn't cause any feelings so you could say that any feelings you have and not the conscience. <laughs> yep. They are they are your emotional responses to the to maybe the conscience, but maybe mm. also to other things. And usually it's to our resistance to truth, not mm. not the other way around. Most of us are not open to receiving the truth, although interestingly enough, the soul is attracted to it. And mm. and interestingly enough, God's laws are designed to give it to us, but but we also have a strong tendency to avoid it because we like truth exposes emotional pain mm. and we want to avoid feelings of emotional pain. Mm. So as long as telling me the truth, like if you told me, uh, uh, if you told the average person on the planet, you've won a million dollars today and it was the truth, 
everyone would probably be pretty happy with that uh, disclosure of truth, right? Yeah. <laughs> so in other words, truth that we feel will benefit us, mm -hmm. we're accepting of, right? Yes. But truth that we feel doesn't benefit us mm -hmm. and any truth, most of us believe that any truth that causes an emotional pain in me means it doesn't benefit me. Yeah. So, so when it comes to truth that causes an emotional response in me that's painful, most of us would have the feeling that that's not benefiting us, yeah. right? And because we have the feeling that it's not benefiting us, we, we basically believe that um, we don't want to hear it. We, we don't want to res respond to it or hear it, right? Yeah. And we fight it. We, we often fight it strenuously. Yeah. Right? So, so the difference between my conscious and my own feelings is quite clear. My conscious doesn't have feelings. Mm -hmm. It has God's feelings, mm. not my feelings. <laughs> It's not my feelings. It, it may trigger my feelings, yep. but they are all my feelings. Yeah. And most of my feelings that come about as a result of conscience, if they're not happy, they are probably coming from a source that's other than, you know, the, some injured source within us. Yes. You know, they're not, they're not coming from a glee about having received the truth from God again. Isn't it wonderful? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you. <laughs> So, you know, in order to discern the difference, obviously, between the conscience and my feelings, it's pretty easy. You just say, oh, I have a feeling, so it can't be my conscience, right? <laughs> <laughs> but on top of that, we need to say, well, you know, we need to develop a sensitivity to our conscience. Well, that's a different well, discussion, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is then? a different discussion. And I suppose um, perhaps I can pick up on what you just said there. You said, well, if I have a feeling, it's not my conscience. Um What happens when you just, you're not very good at recognizing cues, you just recognize feelings? Do, I don't, do, what's, what do you mean by the question? <laughs> I'm trying to, um, so for example, oh, I just feel ashamed. Oh, I just feel like I did something wrong. But, but some of us who are quite sensitive. Yeah, none of that's conscience. No, that's right. Mm -hmm. But did the, con did the conscience trigger a feeling in me well, you'd have to be aware of what the truth was that was said. That's right. Wouldn't you? If, uh, if you were aware of the truth and then you had the feeling, then yes, it might have. <laughs> <laughs> but if you're not aware of the truth, it, it's, it's the truth transmitted to you. You have to be aware of it. Yeah. If you're not aware of what the truth is, but you just feel bad, then obviously it's not the conscience. Yes. Yeah. You have to become aware of that in order for it to actually have caused an emotional response. <laughs> yes. Well, obviously, there's a, there's, a, there's a feeling of having done something wrong um, in that case, you know. So there's a, it's not just a, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm wrong. It's no, you, you'd, you'd know what it is that you yeah. did wrong. Not, yeah. you, you, you wouldn't It'd have be a, specific. Yeah, you wouldn't have this generalised feeling you did something wrong. You, you'd know what you did wrong. Yeah. Um, if it was your conscience in operation, You'd know. Good God, God doesn't say, you've done something wrong, work it out. <laughs> Can you imagine? It's like every day God's saying to you, you've done another thing wrong. And you go, what was it? And he goes, just work it out. <laughs> How loving is that? Right? It's like, Not you know, very. Work it out, but I'm punishing you for it. Yeah. <laughs> and the laws are punishing you for it. Work it out, though, for yourself. Yeah. He, he doesn't want to do that. A he, lot of people probably feel that God's like that, actually. I know they feel yeah. God's like that. that yeah. That's the irony. Yeah. That's what their parents were like, probably. Yes. Right? A lot of work, work it all out. And, then, yeah. and next day, it's a different thing you have to work out because today I, I feel different. And what yes. I wanted yesterday, I don't want today. You know, yeah. that's what it is like with parents. But... But God's not like that. God wants to inform us. Mm. So, you so say if if you're informed through the conscience, you'll know what you did wrong. Yeah. And and you'll know how God feels about it too. Yeah. You you'll know that oh, God feels pretty bad about that, even if I don't yet. Yeah. Um, and you'll be able to discern the difference between God's feelings of the truth of the matter and your feelings of the truth of the matter. You yeah. can you know the difference. You know yeah. when it's like it's the same when I'm talking to you and you have a feeling about the truth of the matter and you go, oh, I feel this and I feel that about the matter. And I go, I don't. You know the difference between the feelings. And it's the same with God. You know the difference between when it's God's feelings and when it's your own and when the two are in harmony with each other. Mm. And it's quite easy to tell. So um, 
you know, I, I just feel that a lot of the times people are getting, like people get confused when we talk about the conscience. Yeah. And this is one reason why it's been a long while before we have, because we've had to talk a lot about emotion first. Yes. Because, it, you know, we have to teach people how to be sensitive to their own emotion. Yeah. And be able to tell the difference between their own emotion and somebody else's emotion. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. How can I become detuned from the conscience? Well, we discussed this matter in detail in one of our previous sessions. So I suggest with these kind of questions, uh, we've been pretty straight in the past in, the, in sessions 9 to 12. Yes, specific, specifically session 11 spoke in this about... Case, yeah. Um, yeah about external what causes and it. internal factors just in summary yeah. we've got the environmental factors of influencing our childhood mm -hmm. and then we've got our growing and maintaining our desires and aspirations and choices out of harmony with love as an adult yeah uh, they are the primary causes but a person to get a more complete answer would have to go back to session 11 and and listen to the whole session because that yeah. explains all of the factors all of the external and internal influences that determine how we become detuned and how also how we can become undetuned if there's, <laughs> you know, re sensitized. reverse yeah. the detunement yes. sensitized to our conscience so yeah and there's no need for us probably to cover it more than that why do i feel unsettled or angry when you're discussing the conscience well again um we have to refer people back to the discussion of sessions nine through to today yeah. uh, you know because we've given many reasons why during mm -hmm. those sessions many reasons why we will have many types of emotional responses to a discussion about the conscience and um, but just again just as a bit of a summary and so forth and um, most people on this planet do not want to be told what to do they don't and god is basically not telling you what to do but most people on the planet don't even want to hear what is the best thing to do the right thing or the do. right thing to do yeah. they don't even want to hear that because yeah. they want to do the wrong thing <laughs> <laughs> so so not wanting to be told what is the best thing to do is a is a, is a big reason why we get angry mm -hmm. when we are discussing the conscience other ones are we have some very big emotions about loss and relationships that cause us uh, that we are attempting to suppress mm. so a lot of grief mm -hmm. and we don't want to feel our grief about them right and so when we hear about the conscience that we can have this all the time relationship with god we, we it just makes us feel like that i'm going to have to feel my grief about having you know certain types of relationships with my parents and, or whatever the grief is you know and so some of us had these kind of relationships where our parents just leached off us for our entire life now, those kind of people are going to probably feel quite challenged about the conscience. Yes, because you're saying that the even the very concept triggers a lot of fear and grief that this conscience-based relationship will be, in fact, the same as the... The relationship with their parent. Yeah. Yeah. They feel it's going to be the same. It's going to be the same kind of self-destruction that occur, uh, destructiveness that occurs through mm -hmm. it that God's always going to be niggling them and uh, <laughs> actually just like their parents were, you know, and, and they sort of feel like this is going to be really bad uh, and it feels terrible. Well, I don't want to hear about this. And they get yes. real upset, angry yes. that someone's talking about it, you know. Yeah. So there's also uh, anger and frustration about having detuned from the conscience and then having to re, you know, sensitize. Most people don't want to resensitize after they've detuned. Yeah. They don't. They, 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 there's a reason why they detuned. Yes. <laughs> and that was to avoid any pain. Yeah. And now they're going to have to feel it. What? You know, so they don't want to do that. What's yeah. it, what, what are you talking about? I don't want that. And so when you discuss the conscience, it's about sensitizing yourself to God's feelings. That's sensitizing yourself to another person's feelings. Mm. Most of us don't even want to know what our partner think, feels. Yeah. So like I watch most relationships nowadays and they go for weeks, if not months, without discussing a single feeling. Mm. It's all just action, 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 do this, do that, do this, do that, have a bit of sex here, right over there, eat there, whatever, go out here. But there's no real discussion of any real emotion that's mm. going on between them. So if they feel like that, they're going to feel quite angry. Mm. about having a connection with God where there's a, this discussion of actual truth about everything about yeah. their life. Yeah. Of course, they're going to get angry about that. And then, yeah. you know, there, there's a situation about feeling like having missed out. Oh, if I, 
But, and I've had people do this in our sessions frequently, you know, where they get so angry that they haven't been told this years ago. Mm. <laughs> you know, they get because they, they and the reason why they're getting that angry is because there's all this pain from that intervening period mm. that they don't wish to feel. So either pain about the sin that they've engaged that they now realise they Mistakes going, they've they, made and so they forth. They did all these things that they now realise were sinful. Yep. Or a feeling of loss of like, wow, I could have been happy. I've accepted all this. I um, could have done all these wonderful things with yeah. my life and look at the mess my life yeah. is in now and what a waste of time and, and they get all depressed and down about that. And, mm. But really they're very angry about mm. it, right? Mm. They're really angry that they've been told all these lies. That's an emotion you have to go through. Yeah. Sure, but 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 it's an avoidance of your own emotions of sadness yes. about what you know how, how you've been treated in your life and the effect it's had on your life. Mm. So these are these are these kind of reasons are the reasons why we get angry. We get angry because we're afraid that we're going to be always having to honour God's demands. Now that's not yes. the point of the conscience. The conscience is not there to demand that you do what God says is right. Mm. It's just there to inform you, if mm. you wish to be informed, about what God knows is good for you mm. and also that's going to make you happy. That's its point. So, yeah, and, and sometimes when we have like really submitted our will and actions to those people around us, when we hear about the conscience, we think, well, okay. All I've got to do now is do that with this one. Ah, oh, what? You know? <laughs> yeah, no, that wasn't what I was <laughs> yeah. going to say, but that's, that's true. No? That's true, yeah. yeah. But also we, we might realise, gosh, I'm already a bit more sensitive to my conscience and I realise now I'm going to actually do a lot of things that are in disharmony with what everyone around me wants and I'm terrified. Terrified of that. And so terrified don't tell me gonna don't tell me that I'm yeah. going to do that. <laughs> well, just just feeling very unsettled and un. Um, well, we usually get angry about yeah. that, don't we? It's like you, basically the the thought is the conscience puts me in danger mm. is really what mm. we're thinking mm. there. It's a lack of faith in the fact that truth is going to help us in yeah. our life, and so we feel that truth is going to place us in danger, and so we feel that our conscience is placing us in danger. Mm. So there's lots of reasons why we get angry about the conscience. We we get angry about the, tra uh, the, the truth that God's truth is absolute. We don't want anything to be absolute. You know, we're addicted on this planet to the concept that there's your truth and there's my truth and nobody really knows the actual truth. And, you know, we become very philosophical about <laughs> truth. Oh, who knows what truth really is? Is truth really just an abstract construct or what, yeah, you know? Yeah. And we go down these lines. And why do we go down these lines? because it helps us avoid emotion, right? Our, prim our primal fear. And so there's a, uh, this is another reason why we get angry. So yeah. there's a lot of reasons why we get angry. Yeah. It, it's just an intense, uh, like... We just want to keep sinning and we don't want to be told we don't, that we'll have to we stop. Don't want to yeah, yeah, we don't want to be told to stop or yeah. we don't want to be told what the consequence is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, know, it's quite simple sometimes, yeah. like that's simple as or, that. Or we, we've been in this codependence with spirits around us. And, and now they want to be told. Or now they've started threatening us because, you know, they yeah. can see that you this is going to change the dynamic here. And, that's right. And we don't want to feel the fear of that. Yeah, yeah. There, there's, there's like a myriad of reasons yeah. why we may get angry about hearing about the conscience. Mm. And I would put forward to most people that if you haven't had at least some anger about hearing about the conscience, then you're in a lot of self-delusion yeah. because it, it, if you just think, oh, it's a wonderful thing without having first gone through quite a lot of anger about it, then I would suggest to you that you're in a lot of delusion about your personal emotional condition. I feel so redeemed by that <laughs> statement. <laughs> well, no, like I feel your response is more, well, it's more accurate and sincere than what I see everybody else's response to it. Most, most people are sort of have this almost this uh oh isn't it so wonderful sort of a very airy fairy type i see it as a very that's not real you know because it because they haven't gone through these emotions and gone okay, and, and yeah. seen the relationship between having this conscious mechanism and how it affects truth in their life you know and and it's iron, ironic i find because when we have one-on-one -on -one conversations with people frequently they get angry about hearing truth yeah. and yet when they talk about the conscience it's all wonderful yeah i'm going obviously you're not hearing much truth for it if that's the case <laughs> yeah. yeah i don't know i i just think i just think i love you for 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 accepting my you know sometimes you know i just feel so 
um, especially when we first met, man, everyone's so spiritual and I'm just like a mess every time. This, yeah. You know, every time that's I'm just so it, confronted. I'm so... And I thought like, that's because everyone else is being so, you know, fake. Yeah, mm. yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But, but, it, but it, like, you, if you think about how much truth in a normal conversation, just in a little conversation with people, you, you know, yeah. you've been present in every conversation I've had probably in the last 10 years almost, Every single time somebody you mentioned the truth or something, the first response is anger. Yeah. And 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 yet they're saying there's no anger when they receive truth from God. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that can't be true. You yeah. know? If yeah. you've got no anger hearing the conscious mechanism, it, you're not hearing the conscious yeah. mechanism. Yeah. Because because at the end of the day, there's no confrontation occurring. Yeah. And yeah. and. And you're in a certain condition that d demonstrates that you're not at one with God. So th there should be some confrontation occurring. Yeah. So obviously you're not that open to your conscience, right? And like I said in the previous answer, most people are heavily shut down. Every person on the planet, heavily shut down from their conscience from childhood onwards. Mm -hmm. and, and it requires a process of opening up to it before you're really going to respond to it. And a part of the opening up to it is getting angry. Getting angry about the mechanism and getting angry about what it does and well, what you've missed out on. Well, just feeling the challenge. I mean, it's yeah. just an immense challenge. Um, yeah. 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 And, yeah. And there's going to be a lot of parental emotions mm. challenged through the mm -hmm. opening of the conscience. And if you haven't gone and done much of that work, mm. it's highly unlikely that you're open to the conscience. Yeah. So, you know, uh, ang I feel a feeling unsettled or angry when you hear about the conscience is a good indication that you're hearing things that are that is in better place than your own condition yeah and, and that you're challenged mm. and that's a good indication that you're actually hearing your conscience rather than a bad one yeah. you know or you're afraid about beginning that process <clears throat> using anger to manage that to, to try course, and suppress to the control fear. Yeah. yeah most yeah. people use anger to control, control. others and and, and to control truth yeah. control the remote yeah. flow of truth so just hearing about the conscience for many people gets them very enraged mm. because uh, they don't want to hear the truth. If, if they engage with it properly, properly. To, to understand what it really is. Yeah, yeah. You, you've got to engage this process with the conscience properly mm. for it to work. You, you've, you've got to accept that every person on this planet has been severely detuned from the conscience yeah. from childhood onwards. And, and most of us are going to have quite a lot of resistance now mm. to actually opening up again to the mechanism. Mm. And, and and if we don't accept that, we're just deluding ourselves. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay.